Welcome to this presentation on uh, our uh, Delta 3-4 defense outside linebacker fundamentals. Uh, this was a presentation that I did at the Georgia Football Coaches Association Clinic on our EDDs and our drill progressions. Um, it was done on a Mac and uh, a lot of guys wanted it but they couldn't open it so I decided to kind of record this and post it here on YouTube. Hopefully you guys will get some use out of it and uh, outside of that enjoy yourself. Hope you learned something. <clears throat> My name is Rocky Hidalgo, and if you've watched any of these, it's my, this is my short bio. I'm the head football coach at Glen Academy I'm in Brunswick, Georgia. There's my uh, email address, coachrock73 at gmail.com, or Twitter at coachrock73. Uh, career record in 12 seasons, uh, 103 and 44. Um, and then uh, shows just a little bit of history there. We've been fortunate enough to have some success at Glen Academy. <clears throat> Uh, just kind of my, my coaching bio, uh, played at Rhodes College in Memphis, Tennessee and coached the outside linebackers. I was a defensive line coach at Walton High School and kind of coached a little bit all over the place, O-line, defensive coordinator, becoming the head coach. 2014, I moved down to Glen Academy and I've spent eight seasons down here uh, and, and had we've had some, some pretty good football teams here on the coast of Georgia. Today we're going to talk about a little bit about outside linebackers and, and really about like something like coaching progression. Uh, you know, a lot of guys don't have that. They don't, they don't take the time to sit down and build on their fundamentals and write down what they have to, what their kids are going to know. Uh, I, I tell you, we don't, we don't assume that any skill is beneath our players. Uh, I've seen times we were struggling on defense and, and we took the kids out on the field. We were talking about pass coverage and we, we took, you know, we told the linebackers go to the curl zone. They didn't know where the curl zone was. So a lot of times as coaches, we get in a hurry to start installing things. And we don't we don't take the time to teach the kings the things that kids need to know and and that's a big issue and and uh, I would say everybody needs to write down their coaching progression uh, and figure out the things like the skills what are your skills uh, what skills do your your players need in order to win game number one of the season and so what we do is we practice map uh, uh, instead of thinking about we have this much time until August first we work back from that we don't begin at practice number one and move forward we start at game one and move backwards. Try to find time to coach the skills your players are going to need to be successful. And uh, we want to evaluate weekly and focus on your weak points. So if, if we're not particularly good at, at uh, playing power pass, we're going to spend more time on power pass. And so it takes some time that you have to sit down and say, these are the skills that we're going to need by week one of the season and figure out when you're going to coach those skills. <clears throat> um, this is an example of what we talk about by practice mapping. Uh, our preseason prep for McIntosh and on 8, 20, and 21. And so we play our, our outside, we'll get into this a little bit, our outside linebackers in, in a lot of different techniques, uh, what we call our 80 technique, ghost or apex skills, cover down skills. And so we at each position, we write down the, the skills that they're going to need to be successful on week one. And so if it's a wing T team, uh, they're going to have to. They're going to need to know to play how to play a tight end in a wing. If it if it's a if it's an air raid team, it's those skills are going to be a little different. That doesn't mean we don't coach those other skills, uh, but our emphasis is going to be a little different. Trying to prep ourselves for week one of the season. <clears throat> Here's an example of what our June calendar would look like and how we're going to coach those things. So we work three days a week during the summer. So Mondays. We're going to work our two our two wide receiver stuff in, in things like Skelly. So we're going to work our apex skills. On Tuesdays, we're going to work three-man surfaces. We might be a half line, work against half line. So we're going to work our 80 technique stuff all, all throughout June. Thursdays is a cover down day. Those cover down days we're going to work if we're, we're, we're cover down. What we call cover down is, is we're playing kind of head up on number two. Uh, and we'll work a lot of trips coverage. So we set those things out. We try to figure out exactly when we're going to coach all those all those skills that we, we set out in, in March and April that our kids are going to need to know, we try to we try to schedule those things into practice so we have a practice plan. Don't essentially what I don't want to do is I don't want our coaches just to show up at 3:30 straight from school with no idea exactly what what drills are going to perform at practice. We ought to have those drills scheduled way in advance and know what we're going to be coaching. <clears throat> Here's an example of our EDDs from 2021. So our Monday. <clears throat> Our Monday practice is an 80 tech EDD, uh, so we're going to work all of our footwork in that pre-practice. Uh, in our, our, our team O, during our team O period, we're going to work things like tandem reads with our safeties. Uh, so they're going to work versus tight end reads with the safeties, and the safeties will fit off of those guys. Tuesday, as I said, apex cover down. Pre-practice -pre -pre for 10 minutes, we're going to work our apex footwork, uh, and that will include our footwork and our reads. 
Uh, and again, we'll move in and team O, we're going to work two wide receiver reads with safeties. So again, we're working all of our apex skills. And then that's in addition to our, these are all in addition to our individual time and our team D time and our group and pods time. This is just where we're going to steal those basic fundamental drills, where we're going to fit those in to our practice time. Uh, Wednesday is a blitz and rush skills day, so we want to we want to things like our our launch points, aiming points, uh, and 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 you know uh, containing the quarterback, uh, things like you know hip clears, dips and rips, stutter and rip, all those things. We want to work those things on Wednesday and Thursdays is, is going to be a big pass drop day for us because we're helmets only, so we're going to do a lot of a lot of stuff. We're working different areas of the field, dropping middle of the field, dropping into the boundary, dropping hash into the ha- uh, off the hash into the field. Um, wall and carry techniques if we're playing cover two will also work it's not on there a lot of man stuff we play some off man or excuse me, some offhand jam man with our outside linebackers we'll work that as well on Thursdays <clears throat> these are the basic viper alignments that we go over our kids what we call the difference we distinguish between a nine technique and an 80 technique and an 80 technique is something between a nine technique and a 90 where a guy is playing five yards off the ball. An 80 technique is we want the we want our outside linebacker to be outside of the tight end. We want to play from outside to in with some leverage there. But the other thing we want to do, we want to play with a little depth, about three yards deep. We tell them a good aiming point uh, about alignment is about the heels depth of the of the uh, defensive lineman. Uh, now, as our players get better, they'll tighten up, they'll move up. But that's really where we want to start. A nine technique, we'll, we'll play a nine technique if we have something we call a blue call, if we have a secondary in a force support outside of us. Um, a nine technique is where he's going to walk it down and screw it down hard over that tight end, and we don't have to be so concerned with getting reached as much. Mm. We also play a ghost. A ghost technique is if we're playing, uh, if a if a receive if a the outside linebacker is on a two man surface, there's only one receiver to his side. He'll play a ghost technique. He's reading through to the near back through the offensive to the hip of the offensive tackle. An apex technique is if we have two receivers, he's going to apex the difference between, the distance between the offensive tackle and the inside receiver, and his read is going to be near back through the hip of the offensive tackle. Here are two more that we that we play with our kids, uh, with our players, and, and one is going to be cover down. We cover down over the number two receiver. We're going to walk up, slide inside leverage on him, uh, and and we'll do this sometimes. And if we're playing our match coverage, or it, so if we want to take away quick game, if we want to take away a lot of, uh, if we're getting somebody that's that's uh, getting a lot of perimeter runs, we want to make sure that we're securing the perimeter. And forcing the ball back inside and take some pressure off the safety, we'll do this. We have a good, really good number two receiver versus two receivers, and we want to get hands on him out there. We'll do it in the same thing, um, but against uh, three receivers, a trips formation. If we're making just a true zone call, we'll cover down on number two. We'll also bump call into a fifty, a hip stack on the fifty on the backside. Uh, we'll train those guys. We don't do quite as much as that, but that is one thing we do go over, depending on the game plan. It's more of a game plan thing than something we work in EDDs. The last one is a choke call. Again, this would be a, a game plan uh, decision, something we were incorporating in if somebody had a really great receiver on the backside of, of uh, trips and we want to help the corner out, then we would take the dog or the backside outside linebacker and we would align him in the throw in the end of the in the quick game, excuse me, in the quick game uh, throwing lane for like slant or hitch or speed out and let the corner play post to fade over the top. Um, and that would be something. We also do a leech technique, which we don't go over in this, where we're going to walk that guy down inside leverage and get hands on him. If they have a really special player over there, we're really worried about him. Uh, we're going to funnel him outside. We'd funnel him outside and let the corner play over the top. But that's one. That's more of a game time thing as opposed to something we work in EDDs. <clears throat> Our 80 technique, uh, these are basic tight end reads. <clears throat> the different reads that we'll get and we'll go over in a separate video our footwork on some of these things something like a reach block uh, tight end reaches us we want to rip and run outside and we'll kind of go over these footwork that we do against these different blocks uh, here in just a little bit um, a post block if we get a post block with a tight end and, and our read for the tight end our eyes are on the chin strap buckle of the tight end so on a reach block that chin strap buckle will disappear It'll disappear on us, so that's how we know it's a reach. On a post, that buckle will come to us. Uh, if he does, if it, we get a post block, we want to maintain outside leverage and work 
uh, to the outside hip of the tight end. Our, our outside linebackers aren't really big, aren't big players. They're most of the time they're about five, seven, 135, 140 pounds, 150 pounds. So we're not going to go in there with hat and hands and shove that guy back in the hole. What we want to do is get a good, quick read for the safety on all of these things. Well, even if the even if the outside linebacker is wrong, we want him to be wrong fast and let the safety fit off of him. Uh, against the post block, we're going to attack his upfield hip, his outside hip upfield. We want to get outside leverage of this, and I'll show you some video here in just a little bit of us playing a post block. We want to be we want to be violent on the thigh board, the thigh pad of the offensive tackle in a scenario like that against the post. Uh, down block, you get down block. It's usually going to be one of two things. It'll be kick out with power from a fullback or a sniffer, or we'll get a trap for a counter or a long trap. Uh, both of these uh, with the defensive end. If we're playing a three-man surface with the uh, with the outside linebacker, we're gonna we're gonna flat squeeze. We'll talk about our flat squeeze uh, in a video and show all the footwork. We're gonna flat squeeze and we're gonna spill both of these uh, to the safety outside. Uh, apex reads. What we call split flow is uh, our our reads on this. We're going to be near hip of the tackle. We're going to see the near hip of the tackle to near back. Uh, and if the back's away, our eyes are going to go to the next threat would be the quarterback. So in this scenario, like a quarterback, like a zone read, that outside linebacker with split flow, the back's away, the outside linebacker is going to stomp his out to outside foot, and he's going to funnel that guy back inside. I want the corner, the, the quarterback, to run the ball between me and the defensive end. We should, depending on what the tackle does. If the, uh, if the tackle tries to scoop up to the next level, then the mic should scrape or place and fit outside, and uh, hopefully we'll make a tackle for, you know, we, tell, we teach those guys we want to be able to fold back in on the quarterback and make a tackle for a two-yard two yard gain in a situation like that. Full flow inside, um, and the other one I didn't include on this, I, I, I forgot to put it on the slide, was full flow outside, which would be outside zone, like an outside. The guy tries to reach us. I'm going to have some video here where we, we talk about our anchor point. We want to get to a point two yards upfield and anchor the defense on the perimeter if we get full flow outside. Full flow inside, the backs inside of us would be like power. We're going to play the ball outside the end because the defensive end is going to spill the ball carrier to us. Uh, these are two two similar type reads where we get like a swing look or a, or a, a running back's going to pitch for speed option. Or, or a pass rate if the if the running back is going to swing. And so basically we want to get full flow to us. We're getting the quarterback to us in the back to pitch. We want to drive our outside foot uh, upfield and we want to we want to get to a position on the line of scrimmage. We want to we want to make sure that we don't get washed by the inside receiver. We want to make that quarterback turn the ball up inside of us. If he pitches the ball, we're going to help the secondary from inside to out. Again, this is one of those scenarios. We want to try, try to make the tackle inside of us for a two-yard gain on this. This play, hopefully, the mic is going to scrape or place and force the pitch, and we can we can work work to the pitch with the secondary out there. Um, the last one is going to be uh, our pass read. Quarterbacks off the midline pass we're going to open up find number two uh in our defense the the linebackers have the running back we're going to open and get under number two and rally to the running back on the thrown ball uh, we're not just going to take it we want to make them throw that ball and come up and make a tackle i've got a, some video of that here at the end of the slideshow <clears throat> um, reach blocks so here's an example of how our kids, how we're supposed to play a reach block. We want to get outside the play. I've got some video on some of these. We want to get outside the play. We see presses up field. We want to force the ball back inside of us. This guy does a good job. This kid, this kid was about 5'8", 160 pounds. He was not a real big kid. And this is against Camden County, a pretty good, pretty good 7'8 football team in the state of Georgia. We want to get up, up field, force the ball back inside. Not a bad job right there. Here's another. We've got a few of these. <clears throat> Wind up this kid over here up top. We're getting reach upfield outside. This is a good fit by the safety. He's going to get downhill. We want that guy to drop out of the spot, drop out of the sky. It's going to get downhill, but we want the outside line. That kid was about 140 pounds. Uh, won two region championships with him, an outside linebacker, in 6A football in Georgia. The big thing is get out, get outside the ball. We want to play fast and let the safety and linebacker fit in a hurry. Another example, gets a reach, want to keep working. We're going to match path with the back, the inside linebacker right here. 
is reading that back. We don't do a very good job of fitting on him very well. But regardless what the play is, we feel like that's going to take us to the ball. <clears throat> up top, same thing. Get a reach block up the field, bring the ball back inside. And if the ball pushes, continues, if we get up the field and the ball pushes outside of us, we should make the tackle for a loss just like this. And like I said, this kid's about 135 pounds. And we want him to play fast. The whole goal on this is so he can play fast. Give him things to do. If I if I were to give him, tell him, hey, man, you get up in there and play toe-to-toe -to -toe with that guy, you know, 90% of the time the kids we're playing against are bigger and stronger than him. So we're going to try to let him play aggressive and, and be fast. Be aggressive and go get the football, and let's let the rest of the defense fit off them. A big part of what we do is we tandem play at different levels. So the guy behind him is going to make him right. And if this ball bounces, this is exactly what should happen. We want to be more aggressive than the offense. That's a good job. A really, a really solid, you know, people always talk about you go watch somebody at a clinic and, and they go, well, we don't have good players. And they turn the film on and everywhere you look, they've got, you know, six foot two, 200 pound outside linebackers. That's not the case for us. We played in the state championship game in 2015. Our outside linebackers were at probably average five foot seven, 160 pounds. And that was in 6A football and on a really good defensive football team. But we don't ask them to stand up toe to toe like a guy at the University of Alabama. Uh, the way we're going to play that guy is probably different than Nick Saban's going to play him just because the, the caliber of kid we have is different. Here's us versus a post block. You'll see this kid, same kid, 150-pound kid. He's going to get a post. Pad level It's going to be really low. He's going to tag the thigh board. He's going to bring this ball back inside. That's a nice job being pad level right there, probably giving up 50 pounds at that tight end. That's what we want it to look like. <clears throat> Here's another one. This kid right here is about 160 pounds. This guy probably had had something bigger for bigger than that for lunch. And what we want to do is, again, pad level. And we don't want to post that guy. If that guy posts on us, we don't want to try to press him back inside. He's not going to condense. Uh, that 160-pound kid is not going to push that 270-pound kid, kid back in the hole if he just tries to stick his face, hit meeting face, fa face mask to face mask and put my hands on him. I'm going to try to get upfield and force the ball back inside for my safety and my linebacker to fit on it, hopefully, anyway. You see him, he's going to take position outside and upfield. And this is, this is where we want the ball. And I, what we tell him is that ball outside, I'd actually like him to be a little more upfield here, press more upfield, um, press a little more upfield just so, we can, uh, just so we can make sure that ball can't bounce on us right here. Here's some, some video of us C-cutting. We do a good job. I get, I get excited when people try to kick us out. <clears throat> Again, this kid's 100. I, 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 people tell me all the time, Coach, we can't we can't see cut a guy from that that tight snug position right there. Well, I say that's a load of baloney. You can see cut him. This kid does a great job underneath. Eyes for the running back. That's a great job on a on a kid on just a, a kid that is a just an average physically an average or below average physical specimen. If that kid walked in with his shirt off in your in your office. Uh, if he was, he was never the first guy off the bus. Let me just say that. But you see this guy, we want him to see cut and come underneath and I'll show you the video on some of these. We're going to do a separate video with all the footwork on the EDDs. When he comes underneath, he's, his, his job is to look to the mesh point. And if that ball crams underneath, he's supposed to tackle it. This is a great job. This is a, uh, the, the example of a kid doing what he's coached to do right here. Comes underneath, squares back up, makes the tackle. That's a, that's a, that's a heck of a play right there. This kid does it over and over again. Here it is, same play. I'm going to trade the guys over. <clears throat> C cut. Now this time they bounce it, and there's the linebacker on the scrape. The linebacker almost overruns it. Linebacker almost overruns it. Safety ought to be outside. I think the safety's a little slow. He's a little slow. This kid, this was his first start that night. He needs to kick down a little faster and have some outside leverage. He gets a good clean down block by the tight end. That's an easy read, but the backer ought to be inside out on that. But pretty good defense all in all. <clears throat> Same, another example. Again, this kid is going to Barry College over here. You know, 165 pound kid. Underneath, spills outside, linebacker whiffs on him right there. You see that? 
You know, we got good support outside with the safeties outside, so we're in a good position. The linebacker should be inside out him and misses him right there. And I'll show you an example. This next one, an example of when your safety ducks under, underneath. Outside linebacker does a good job on the spill. The safety's going to come underneath, bounces, we lose contain. And you see that if you go back and watch that. The inside linebacker's in good position. Safety should have kept his outside position on this. He's a spill player. Instead, he sticks his nose in there against a good athlete. <laughs> Didn't need much right there. <clears throat> anchor technique. We call it anchor technique. If we get somebody on the perimeter, upfield on the perimeter, we're going to work to two feet or two yards. Two yards of depth, keep outside leverage. We want to force that ball back inside of us. A lot of guys struggle with perimeter runs. You don't want that guy to work. So you want him to come set the edge, but you don't want him to work so far up the field that the ball just runs back underneath him. Um, and what we tell him is our goal is – our aiming point is about two yards deep. We want to set the edge, condense that the kick-out block back inside. Um, and if the ball bounces outside us, we should make the tackle for a loss. We want to force it back inside. Again, it's a good job. The ball bounces this time. <clears throat> He's on the perimeter, apex technique. Ball comes to him. He's outside, and that's exactly what it should look like. He wants to condense the room that the back has to that the back has to 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 make a play to cram it in there, which he does. He needs to keep his inside be a little more inside, shoulder forward a little bit. His back bounces outside. It ought to be a tackle for loss, which it is. That's that's what we want from it. Some apex and cover down. <clears throat> this is he's covered down. This is what we call our cover down technique. It's going to work in number two's inside. He's going to pass him off. It's going to work in the curl zone outside. Just some different techniques in here. Cover down technique. Here it's going to be aggressive. Play fast. Play fast. We want to win battles. Not because we're bigger and stronger, but we play faster than the other team. That's just a kid making, going up and making a play. We want to give them things they can do, and they can do it in a hurry. Apex technique in the boundary. I'm going to get fast screen. And so we replace from the fast screen. We see fast screen come out like this. The back's out to us. We're going to cross face a number two on a situation like this. This kid does a pretty good job of it. I want to get outside and, and cut the route off. Not a lot of room to work over there in the boundary, so we try to snug that guy up. Swing, you see the back. He does a good job here. We get swing, get a swing. Swing by the back, he gets a pass read. He's going to hold number two for a second, break on the thrown ball, go up and make a tackle. There's the ball's out. we got plenty of time. Goes and make a tackle for a one-yard loss. That's a pretty good job. Kid's a good high school football player. Well, that's all for the slides uh, in this presentation. I'm going to – our next video in the series is going to have a lot of our EDD footwork. I know I'm, I'm posting this because some guys wanted to see this from a clinic I did. Um, and I'll put a link to the to the to the videos on this one at the end of this one, um, but uh, and, and this was all done on a Mac, so a lot of guys couldn't open it because it wasn't on a Mac. So I told them I'd post it on YouTube. I hope you guys get something out of this. I'll shoot the link out, and uh, I appreciate you guys uh, coming in, taking the time to look at this stuff. If you got comments, something you want to see, email me, and and uh, I'll I'll do the best I can. Thank you very much. Appreciate it.